What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, saints and ain'ts, and welcome to another episode of Beyond the Shoe. I am your host, Dominic Smith, and tonight I have one of the best defensive tackles in the country joining me for the show, none other than John Walker III. John, appreciate you being on, my man. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing, Coach? Not too bad, brother. Listen, I'm very excited to get a chance to interview you. Like I told you prior to us starting the show, you have an incredible highlight reel, and you played some top-level competition down there in Osceola County for uh, Osceola High School in Kissimmee. But the first thing I want to ask you, if you had, and I've asked this question to guests on the show, especially the linemen, if you had to compare your game to one of the Avengers, which one would it be? Um, I'll compare it to Hulk because I'm aggressive, and I like – Bullying, um, you know, using my power a lot to the office alignment. I'll probably compare it to Oak. Hey, I can see that because not only are you aggressive, and that's where we'll lead in. One of the things that impressed me is that you have a very quick first step off the ball, especially for somebody so young, and you're able to shift your power to really bully the offensive lineman. So, as a defensive tackle, kind of what's your mentality? you know, going into the games? Because interior defensive linemen, you know, sometimes they don't get all the glory because, you know, they have so many different responsibilities. But what I think, you know, just based on the tape, what stands out about you is that you're a playmaker. What's that mentality like for you when you step out on the field, especially knowing that you're playing with one of the best defensive lines in the state? Um, I just got to make a play. That's why, I all, like, that's why I'd be saying in my head, I got to make a play. I got to make a play. So I find different ways to make the play. Like I use all my skill set each play. Like first I read the office alignment, see we be see we be doing like a couple of series. And that's when I start like start going. So that's when I start making plays and you just got to make plays to help the team out. So that's what I'd be thinking all the time. Just make plays. What's what's it like playing with such a talented defensive line? You have one of the best defensive ends in the country in Derek LeBlanc you know, who's on there on the defensive line with you. What What is it like? Does it make your job easier or, you know, are you just that competitive? Like I got to make the play and everything like that. Yes, sir. Me, me and him be having like a little competition. You'd be saying, you'd be seeing who could get like the most sacks or more, the most tackles like each game. So me and him be having little competitions, but we'd be working like with each other all the time. We'd be working out all the time. And then we just be working each other, get, get each other better. So we'd be having a little competition during the game stuff. That's What's hard. the preparation like for you? You tell me you, you know, watch the little nuances. You know, what is the offensive lineman doing? Obviously, you know, as a defensive tackle, you can kind of tell, you know, what the play is by what the guard's doing or what the center's doing or the specific stance. So for you personally, what is your preparation like before a game? And how do you think it separates yourself at this age, you know, as a sophomore, you know, going into your junior year next year, how does your preparation, you know, set you apart, you know, from different defensive tackles around the country and just players around the country? Because it sounds like you put a lot of work in to be productive when you hit the field on Friday nights. Yes, sir. Um, like before the game or like, um, during like film time, I'd be watching like um, their feet, how their feet is or how their hand is like, like I could like read their hand or like the way like they're backed up because some some plays they be like backed up from the center because mm -hmm. I, uh, I play the three tech. So I go line up against the guard. So I look at the guard and see if he's backed up. If he's backed up, that means he's probably pulling or um probably doing like a reach or anything because, you know, some linemen are slow, so they got to have like a little head start. So they're like back up a little bit. And then sometimes I'd be seeing like their hand, like their hand don't be like fully on the ground. That means like they're probably having like a, like a reach, reach block or they're right. probably pulling. So yeah, I'd be um, looking at all the time. And then if I see their hand on the ground, like a lot of weight on their hand, I'd be expecting a run. So that's what I'd be doing. I'd just be, looking at little things, their hands, their legs, their placement of, of where they're at on the line. So I, I just be looking at mainly those things. That's how I be making a lot of plays because when I be saying 
offensive offensive lineman backed up. Like I already knew it was gonna have probably like a quick reach, like a um a um a sweep or probably like a um a stretch. Yeah. One of those things. So I'd just be ready all the time. So we're probably a play action. So I'd just be prepared. I already know I gotta use I gotta use my first step. I gotta be quick. I gotta be faster than the offensive lineman. I gotta like be the first one there. That's you're me. you're really athletic for someone who's two hundred and eighty pounds. Do you play any other sports outside of football? Um, no, sir. Um, I used to play ba- um basketball and um baseball. Really? Okay. Yes, why did you Why did you stop? Just wanted to devote everything to football. Um, I stopped when I got to high school because. I had like my, like my jeans, my dad's side of the family, they had really bad knees when they played basketball. So I didn't want basketball to ruin my football career because, because they really had bad knees and I, and plus I'm pretty heavy. So I don't want, you know, to have bad knees. Yeah. I stop. So I want to recap your season. You guys down at Osceola Kissimmee, obviously, you know, things were a little dicey in the state of Florida with football, but you guys had a fantastic season. Unfortunately, you lost to Seminole in the state championship game, but you beat some really, really, really good teams to get there. And so there's a game in particular that I want to know a little bit more about. You guys played Miami Palmetto down at Miami Palmetto. That was one of the craziest games. I didn't go, obviously, you know, I'm here in Central Florida, but I remember following along because it was on a Saturday night. That was one of the craziest games of the entire year that I followed. What was it like playing in that game? Because you played against, I don't know what, where he was ranked, but he was a five-star defensive tackle. Uh, Leonard Taylor committed to Miami. And this team from Osceola went down there, and you guys won. What was that like to play in that game in a hostile environment for in the playoffs? Well, we were just focused because – we had a we we already had a game plan. We already prepared, so we we're just focused, get our, like get our job done and everything like that. So we we're just really focused, and you already know, um, like Lawrence Taylor, he was a really good athlete and good player. So we already know, like we gotta like block him and you know make some good plays and you know. What was it like just this entire season? How do you feel like you grew? Um, not just as an athlete, but as a student. Um, I grew by, um, you know, like becoming a man because I know, like, I'm still young and everything, but like, I, but I could see like me maturing a lot because before, I was I was really not taking like things serious, but um, you know, while playing football, you know, my coaches are my coaches, but like, like they help me out out of football too, so they help me with school and not just school, but like, you know, the, the real world. Yeah. So they helped me and my dad too. They helped me around and get, get me to like, know like new things that like I didn't know and stuff. Yeah. How has the recruiting process been like for you? Obviously it's a little different. You're class of 2023. So, um, you know, you, you are doing the primary contacting when it comes to talking to the coaches, but you dropped the top 12. It is an impressive top 12. Ohio State's on that list. What What has the entire process been like for you so far? Um, it's just a blessing. I thank God every single day. Every, every, every time I wake up, I pray to him and just tell him thank you for giving me this opportunity to, like, become, like, a great athlete and stuff. So I just thank God, and it's just a blessing. So I just stay humble about it and go along with the process. Are you close to committing at all? Or do you want to take some time and take visits and, and all of that? Yeah I, yeah. I want to take some visits. So that's what, I'm, that's what I'm going to do on during the summer. I'm going to take some visits to um, some schools, schools that I'm interested in, you know, just take some visits and go from there. Definitely. And what are you looking for when you hit the college campus? What are some of the things that are most important to you and your family um, that you have to see in order to make the decision of where you want to play your next three to four years? Um, I just want to have, like, a good bond with the coaches and, the t- and, my, and, like, you know, the teammates, my teammates. So I just want to have a good bond with them and then be, be like, like, feel like I'm home. 
I want to be comfortable and feel like I'm home. So I just want to really focus on the bond and my education. I don't because I like I want to have a degree. So if I can't make it to the league or anything, I want to like I want to make sure I have a degree so I could get a good job or anything like that. Do you have any idea what you want to major in or what you want to do post college? Um, I want to major in sports medicine. Okay. That's what's up. You could be an athletic trainer on the sideline and everything. So I want to throw a weird one at you. So NCAA, they're going to bring back the football game. What would it be like for you to one day, you know, just hop on whatever gaming console you have and you get a chance to see yourself on the game, millions of people are going to have it on whatever team you choose and play as yourself. How cool would that be to be able to do that? Have you thought about that at all? Like, because I believe they're talking 2023. So maybe the year after, I think, would be your year when they put it on. But how cool would that be for you? Is it something you've given thought to? Yeah. Um. Like a, like a couple of weeks ago, I was thinking about that. So that would be really cool, like seeing myself in a video game playing. Because I, I love playing video games. I like playing Madden and 2K, different video games. So that would be really cool seeing myself in a video game and playing in a video game. And that would be just a, a blessing, like a mind blown. Like, what's the best game that you're you're at? What's the what's what's your favorite game? And what game, if somebody challenged you, it wouldn't be a competition that you could whoop anybody at. Oh, uh, I'll be anyone in Madden. Really? Yeah. What with what team? I use the Titans. The Texans? No, Titans. Oh, the Titans. I was gonna say you whooping people with the Texans. So are you just running the ball with Derrick Henry every drive? Um, not every drive. I got you know different plays like here and there with um AJ Brown. You know, got a little cheat codes. <laughs> I got you. Hey. I admire the confidence. I've the Titans. I've never heard of anybody whooping teams with the Titans, but hey, they do well in the NFL, so they might as well do well on Madden. Who do you compare uh, your game after? It could be any college athlete, pro athlete, but who do you model your game after? Um, I'll say like Eric Donald or like a Don Donald McSue. Okay. Definitely, I could see it with the quick first step. What is it about them that you love, and what is it about them that you try to emulate? Um, that they go 100 every play. Um, they use their hands well. They're aggressive every play. They make, like, big impacts during the game. Like, if they can't make the play, their teammates going to make the play because of, of the things that they have done. Like, some plays they get double teamed, so they're going to leave someone at least open or, like, a one-on-one -on -one they could be. So, you know, that'll be – that's good um, to have and stuff and use. As an elite defensive tackle, what are some of the things that you do, you know, out, as far as training uh, is concerned to kind of improve your game, kind of – Give, like, the people an idea of what is a typical day for you. What are the extra things you do to really work on your game and take your game to the next level? Um, I do, like, a lot of D-line work because you got to have aggressive hands. You got to have the right technique. So you just got to keep on practicing and practicing and practicing because D-line is not an easy thing, easy thing to do. So you got to practice every little thing, like your strike, your step, um, you got to like look at the playbook too. You see like the stunts you got to do. You just got to you know, practice the D line work. Not, not just that you got to get in a weight room. You got to get strong. You can't, you can't be weak and playing D line because you're going to get tossed around, thrown around and everything. So you got to stay, you got to stay on your ground, but you got to stay with that too. How excited are you for next season? What is, what can people expect from Osceola? Um, we're going to win States. I already know that. Oh, okay. we're gonna we're going to win states next season. We, we're going to have a team. Um, so I'm, I'm I'm excited for that. Definitely. When do you guys start spring ball? Um, we start spring ball like around like in two weeks. Like our game is like in – I don't know when our game is, but like we start practice like in two weeks. Okay. Who are you guys facing this year? Um, Edgewater. Oh, wow. So for those who – don't know you're talking about two of the premier 
teams, not just in Central Florida, but in the state of Florida and in some ways the country. Um, Edgewater is a fantastic team. They've been to the state championship the last two years. Unfortunately, came up just short to St. Thomas Aquinas. Osceola has always been a consistent powerhouse. So that's definitely, is that game at Osceola or Edgewater? Um, I believe it is, is at Edgewater. Price. Okay. Yeah. Definitely. So we'll, you know, definitely want to check that out because there's going to be elite prospects all over the board for that one. I want to ask a question a little bit outside of football. Football, and especially with someone as talented as you and the opportunities that you have, it'll give you a chance to really shine a light on things that are important with the platform that you're given. What are some of the things that are important to you that you would like to use football to bring awareness to, if that makes sense? Oh, like, like just be, you're, you it could be anything. It. Yeah, it, it could be whether it's, I mean, social issues. It could just be human nature issues. It could just be something that's near and dear to your heart, animals, wildlife, you know, the um, list goes on and on. Um, the thing that's mo- like motivate me and stuff to yeah. play football um, is like is my family because they work really hard to um, to provide me with food and everything. They've done a lot of stuff for me, so I just want to do do it for them, do it for myself too. I want to have a good, good future because my family like before they didn't have things to pro- provide me with some stuff. So I like I need help with some like some of my family members. So. Um, yeah, I just want to do it for my family and do it for myself and um, help them out. Definitely, man. I definitely feel that. So I want to ask you just a few more questions and everything. So why the number 55? Because I noticed, I think, let me double check. I think it was, what, 55 problems is <laughs> kind of what? So why the number 55? What's significant about that? Um, I like, I, I, um, the reason I got number 55 is, uh, I don't know. I just like, like a double digit. Like I like the same number. Cause when I was little, that's like the, like when I first started tackle football or I started tackle football, like around six, that's, that was my first number 55. So, I don't know. Some reason I just like number 55 when I was little. So I stuck with that. And then, cause I used to watch, um, I forgot. I forgot what team I watch because, like, I was really not like a big fan of football when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I, I started watching football with my dad, and I watched people like I watch um, different people that have number fifty five. So I started like, oh, I like that number. So like, when I first started football, I got number fifty five, and I stuck with that number since since when I was little to high school. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I can dig it. See, you you strike me as somebody that could wear number one, like one of those single digit numbers. Yeah, that's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> so who is John Walker outside the football field? Who who are you off the football field? What it was a hidden talent that no one knows about. What what are some of the things that you believe make you unique? Um, I'm just a normal guy that just plays video games or I work out. I like to stay I like I like to be with my family, so I like having family time. Um, I'm just rec- I'm just like a regular I'm just a regular person that play video games, be with the family, play outside. I, I like playing basketball, so I'd be playing like street basketball. Oh. So I'd be yeah. so it's a, it's aggressive essentially. Yes, sir. If there was a food that you couldn't live without, what what is it? What would it be? Steak. What kind of steak? Um, and why? Um, I like T Bone, T Bone, okay. or Rip Pie. Yeah, one of or those. You know, I can dig it. Okay. So, last couple questions. Do you believe that is distance a factor with you when it comes to choosing a school? Um, I talked to my family about that. Um, yes and no, because yes, it's um because you know. Just in case, if I need my family for something, they're right there to help me out. No, because um, I go to like wherever that I, I'm gonna go to any college that's gonna um, put me to the next level. Definitely. So I, 
I'll go to any college that put me to the next level. That's the first thing I'm thinking about because I want to go because college is not the like um jackpot. I want to go to the NFL. Definitely, that's the big plan. And then, where can the people follow you on social media? Where? Yeah, what what platforms? I know Instagram. Instagram is, and I'm going to put this. Um, you know, when this video is posted, I'll make sure to include it. But I know it's at Fifty Five Problems on Instagram. Yeah. And what's Twitter? On uh, Twitter is John Wall. So J O H N W A L. Um, I didn't make Twitter, so the last digits were like six six zero five one seven six seven eight. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, I'll definitely have to <laughs> go back in there, and edit that to make sure yeah. that you know, I'm make sure. But listen, man, I appreciate you uh, chatting with me. Like I said, I'm gonna put your huddle highlights for people to see. This is one of the baddest man, baddest defensive tackles in the nation in the class of 2023, and uh, the sky's the limit for you, brother. Um, but thank you so much for ha- uh, for joining me. And this has been Beyond the Shoe with Dominique Smith. We'll see you next time.